I'm Scholar D, and this is Warpaint Studios. Welcome back to the channel. Now in our last video, we prepared Azrael for painting by assembling it, cleaning it, priming it, and then what we did was instead of a Xenothal highlight, we did an undercolor. Now undercolors act just like Xenothal highlights in the sense that we're looking for shadows and highlights, but instead we're using different colors to show those shadows and highlights and to boost the color hue in the palette by giving different volumes of color. Not your typical, here's green, here's, you know, maybe a darker green or black to create shadow, but to use different kinds of colors like magentas and purples for shadows to contrast the color on the palette with greens and turquoise and blues to really give us a, a meaningful definition in the miniature, just to give us something different on the, on the battlefield when we place it on the table, make it pop a little bit. So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna focus on the robes. Now, doing this means that as you watch the process of us painting the robes, you might see different things painted on the miniature, from details to an oil wash done on the miniature. Now, don't, don't worry, we are gonna come back to that and I'll talk about that in other videos. But for now, I just wanted to do a video on the process of painting the robes and how we get definition and highlights on things that look like cloth or things that look like robes or material. So, let's get started. We're gonna start off with Reaper Bone's Aged Bone. Now this is gonna go on over as a thin coat. And you're gonna probably have to do two to three layers, even four, depending on how thinned out they are. And as you paint, you might get, not globs, but you might see recesses where certain raised areas will show more of the green. That's okay, because as it dries, you'll go back over it again and repaint it with thin layers. Eventually those layers will become more opaque and block out that green. But the idea of the underpainting, and as I said in the previous video, people might feel that that green paint that you created or that purple paint you created on the underpainting is wasted, but it's not. Because you're using thin coats of the acrylic paint that's going over on the robes, it actually brings out more definition and you kind of get a feeling of it blending nicely with the green armor and the purple shadows. Because as those thin layers come over, those underpaints will actually shine through. Not necessarily shine, more so kind of like, create like a um, soft hue coming through the paint. And that's fine, that's exactly what you kind of want. And you just have to keep going on that. And then eventually you'll be happy with the result that you get, but it takes time, you have to go slow. Next up, we're going to be using Warpstone Glow from Citadel Paints. This is a layer paint that we're going to be putting over our underpainting of green and purple. Now, this is a bit of a lighter color. So this is going to be on all the areas that are raised and definitely within the zone of a highlight where we know light is supposed to be hitting it. And again, this is mainly from a 45 degree angle to a 90 degree angle, mainly because when it's on the table, people are going to be seeing it from that angle. So we want those raised edges to shine the most or come out the most. But we are also going to be going over the raised edges in the shadow zones where we painted the purples. Now, the reason why we do this is because by putting a little bit of the green on the raised folds of the cloth is going to give us a nice blend with the eye. As the eye transitions from the highlights to the shadows, it'll make a nice easy transition for us to be able to see definition and still believe that it looks realistic. On a side note, just to let you know, the brush technique I'm using at the moment is a kind of dabbing effect. It's called stippling. And what we're doing is we're just gently going over it and stippling it, kind of giving it almost like a pixel-like feel because it's easier to blend and easier to create transitions because as you stipple and the paint dries, it allows you to create lighter and lighter stippling at the edges, which gives a nice natural transition. This can be done as well with a form of painting called glaze painting or feathering. Now I'll show how to do that in a later video, but for now we're just using a stippling method because this is a little bit of a faster method of painting.
Next up, we're going to be using P3 Formula khaki color uh, paint from Privateer Press. Now, again, we're going to use that same stippling method, and we're going to be going over all of the white robes um, that we painted before with aged bone. Now, you see we did an oil wash here. Like I said before, we're going to be doing videos on how to do oil washes, and I'll talk about the benefits of using an oil wash. Just a reminder, when you're using the stippling method, you want to be very light with your touches. And it's a type of uh, brush control that is very, very unique because you can easily damage your brushes. So I recommend using older brushes when you're practicing with this technique until you get really, really good with it. Another way to get better with stippling is sometimes use the side of your brush, not directly the point, but the side, especially with raised edges that are very, very deep or very, very angled. So it'll allow you to use the side of your brush without damaging the point of your brush. Now what I like about stippling is that it lends a very nice textured look to the miniature wherever you're painting it and also it lends to a really nice smooth transition because as the paint dries and you keep stippling it makes it fade a little bit quicker and it gives you a really nice look. Finally, we're going to be using this new prismatic paint from WizKids and Vallejo. This is for their D&D range. And we're going to be using this white as the final highlight to the white robes. Now, white is one of the most difficult colors to use in hobby painting, especially miniatures, because many different companies have whites that are kind of too uh, light or too thin and do not coat well enough. But we're going to test this out. And so far, I really am impressed with this type of white. It's probably one of the best whites I've seen in a long time. Then again, it's from Vallejo, and honestly, out of all the different paints, including Citadel, Vallejo does put out a really good white. And so with this, I'm not surprised. And they actually talked about it being a new type of formula used differently from their regular paint line. Well, there you have it. It's not a slap chop way, it's not a speed paint way, but it's a classic way to paint robes to make your miniature really stand out on the table. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this video. You can also support the studio by going to our Beacon link tree in the link description below. You can support us by joining all of our social media areas, as well as supporting us on Buy Me A Coffee. Happy hobbying.